It seems like a good time to reflect back on the past year, as well as look forward to shaping and creating a better future. In doing so in an audience with, I think, 35 nationalities, I'm conscious that I look back with a particular set of glasses that is rooted in who I am and in my unique personal journey. I'm looking back aware that today's theme is democracy and development rising from the wounds of war. But doctors are supposed to think of prevention as well as cure, so I wanted to look back even further to see what lessons we could learn that might prevent wars from arising in the first place. 2011 will remain etched in my mind as a pivotal year for democracy. Two events stand out and made my heart leap with joy. They were the Arab Spring and the birth of South Sudan. Both, <laughs> both are life-changing events that represent the hopes and aspirations of Arabs and South Sudanese for a future with peace, democracy, development, and the chance to fulfill their own destiny. Both peoples face huge challenges. Both will need support from the outside to flourish. But my hope is that the West can develop a value-based foreign policy, supporting what people on the ground want, not their own interests. I am a British, Egyptian, Arab, practicing Muslim woman whose life has been greatly enriched by my encounters with people of other traditions. As I followed the converging <coughs> threads of my rather unorthodox life journey, I was faced with some very challenging questions about the impact of historical events and their impact on our lives today and the legacy that historical events leave that make nationhood and democracy an even harder challenge. As I reflected on my passionate wish for the West to have a value-based foreign policy towards the Middle East, <coughs> I was struck by the fact that over the centuries, the relationship at government level between Egypt and Sudan has been on the part of Egypt characterized by periods of conquest, domination, interference, and motivated by self-interest. This government level of action has sometimes and quite often been out of sync with the affection and regard ordinary Egyptians have for the people of Sudan. I'm also passionate about the city that has been my home for the last 25 years. Most people associate Liverpool with the Beatles or football, but it has another side to it. In the second half of the 19th century, the backbone of Liverpool's prosperity was the slave trade. To walk around its International Slavery Museum is a gut-wrenching experience of man's inhumanity to man and the indignity and degradation suffered by black Africans in this abominable period of history. Islam clearly and categorically forbids slavery. In our tradition on the Day of Judgment, the Prophet himself will stand as plaintiff against the one who enslaves a free man, then sells him and eats his money. Yet, Arab Muslims had their own slave trade and slave roots. I'm aware that I cannot change history, but for the wounded memories and the legacy of this history that those of you from South Sudan and other countries across Africa still suffer from, I can only stand here and offer my deepest sincere apology. All men and women are created equal no matter what their color, race, creed, or education. 
All people should be treated with dignity, respect, and compassion. If I was ever to succumb to the sin of superiority, my personal reminder of equality is a coin I carry in my purse, which I never spend. It is a commemorative coin issued on the 20th anniversary of the act abolishing slavery in Britain. As we move forward in... As we move forward into 2012 and beyond, I hope especially that the Arab world and the South Sudanese will rise above the wounds of war as well as the wounds of the past. We need each other. If we are to create a future with peace, stability, democracy, and development for all. I also hope that the international community of IFC can play an active, supportive partnership in this role of helping both peoples fulfill their aspirations.